Hello YouTube, Luigi here. Today we're going to try to do um, episode 11 in our ongoing saga, Tales of a Country Architect. I'm going to call this one Fear of Color. Fear of Color. And like several of my previous ones, this one takes place in the office of my mentor, Mr. Frank Kennett. Uh, I guess it wasn't until I started going through my memoirs here that I realized how many great memories I have of working with Frank, though. Okay, you know, Frank, uh, Frank had an office in the sun porch of the old hospital. Beautiful, beautiful space. Before that, he was in the Gibson block, big, nice brick commercial building. We're smack in the middle of downtown North Conway. And before he was on the sun porch, I mean, as they were remodeling the sun porch, Frank's office has moved to the basement of the hospital, across the hall from the boiler room. Boo. And then from there, he remodeled his 1800-era barn into magnificent workspace. Wonderful working environment. But we were at the basement of the hospital in 1978 when we have the dining commons to the Plymouth State College uh, under construction. In 1967, I wasn't there. Frank did the original Plymouth State Dining Commons at the campus in Plymouth for the University System of New Hampshire. Um, this was given an award for the best building of any type designed in the state of New Hampshire that year. And Frank got a gracious letter of commendation from the Department of Buildings and Grounds, you know, the maintenance people at the university system, that said of all their buildings, Frank's building gave them the least grief, required the least maintenance, and was the least finicky. So it was obvious that Frank was the clear choice to put the addition on this very successful dining commons, the original which of which was built in 1967. Um, it's under construction is pretty much done except for the selection of finishes. And, and the, it was a nice, tall space with a tectum ceiling, and, a, and the walls were, Frank loved these British cavity walls, these three wide, thick uh, cavity walls. And um, Frank had a brick called the Cane Gonic. That was the brickyard that came from Gonic, New Hampshire. Cane Gonic, water struck, New Hampshire water struck, Harvard's fired in small batches in a wood-fired kiln. Wood-fired kiln. That will come up as important later. So uh, I know what Frank's doing. He's picking out the colors for the vinyl sheet goods, which are going to go on the floor in the dining common slab. And he calls me into his office. And he said, Luigi, take a look at uh, take a look at these. Which of these would you put, pick for the dining commons? And I said, I would pick any of them, Frank. I think they're all dreadful. And he bristles. Oh, my God, they're dreadful. I said, yeah, Frank, you, I, I don't know anybody on earth who has such a limited uh, a, a palette of colors as you do, who is so afraid of working with color as you are. He says, what do you mean? I says, every single time you go through this exercise with vinyl sheet, which you pick out the light browns or the dark beiges, and, and, and you're in this neutral safe but neutral, non-offensive color that you can put them anywhere and be safe. The, tr the point is these colors are not obnoxious enough to hate and they're not exciting enough to love. It's like pablum here, Frank. These are bromides for, um, for colors. And he starts to talk. I said, I'm not done, Frank. It's more than just vinyl sheet goods. You only have one color you put on your walls. It's P&L Bone. You only know one for mica color, and it is terracotta. You only know one paint for exterior metals, and that is P&L Char Brown. So everything you paint looks like a UPS truck. I said, you know, Frank, it's it's, it's just true. Everything you everything you do is so <coughs> vanilla and boring. So um, I know enough not to not to lay out any criticism without first having a superior solution in mind to offer to the situation. This is what separates bitching and moaning and pissing and whining from constructive, 
criticism, constructive criticism will always offer a superior solution in the place of that which needs to be criticized, okay? It's all in the delivery, by the way. You can do this tactfully and generously, or you can slam your opponent and, and, and make them feel like dirt. You can humiliate them. It's all, it's all in the tactfulness of the delivery. So Frank heard some, it might have seemed like strong language, but Frank heard some, you know, intelligent, cogent arguments connected to it. And Frank has enough respect for me to say, okay, Mr. Bartolomeo, what color would you put in it? on the floor of the Plymouth Dining Commons. And I was ready for this. I said, Frank, right now, you and I, imagine in our mind's eye that we're standing inside the Dining Commons. And we look around and we see these beautifully laid up with that famous tinted mortar roofs, these beautiful cane gonic harbors, wood-fired in small batches with what? What does the wood firing impart to this brick? A blue flash, a unique blue flash. Blue and red, we don't think of blue and red and brick going together, but in this case, because it's a natural part of the firing process, it looks like a billion dollars. I said, Frank, I think if we concentrate on the blue and go with a low pile, direct blue down carpet, number one, we're going to pick up the blue in the wall. Number two, we're going to have a softer material on the floor, giving us much better acoustics in that room. And number three, I think it's going to look like gangbusters. Well, now I have his attention. His Frank doesn't see, think this way in terms of assembling colors. So he called in Martha, Martha C. Burns, a little left-handed girl who took 75% cut and paid to work for Frank because she was fleeing a relationship. Um, and he has her go down to the sample room and bring back a couple of uh, straps of brick. Which was an odd thing for Martha to do, because one strap alone weighed twice what she did. So, uh, she brings them in. We get a wet sponge. We wet them down so we can see how the blue is popping. Then he sends her back to the sample room to get every swatch of carpet we have that's close to this family of blues that we see on the brick. And before you know it, Frank's on the phone calling up local carpet people, asking for updated samples because everything in his office is a thousand years old. And uh, we set up a time to go down to Plymouth with our swatches, hold them up against the wall in place, see them in, in that environment, in that light, in that daylight, in that net, uh, net, on that uh, artificial light. And we come up with a consensus and we select something that eventually got installed. And when it was all installed, and Frank and I were down there one day, he says, you know, Luigi, he says, you know, I never would, it never would have occurred to me to pick up a new carpet for this room. But I'm glad you did, because I think it looks just like you said it was. It was going to look terrific, and it's just, it's a great, great choice. And it really was. And what's, so what's the lesson here? The lesson here is not about picking colors in a vacuum, not about being arbitrary. But go down into which the environment, in the environment in which it's going to be seen, and look for things, look for clues, look for little accents that want to be brought out further, or look for other little details where where you can complement them with a color, with a near color, or complement them with a complementary color. But look, look what go down there, get your ass down there. There's no substitute for this, and start picking things out in terms of what you see directly in front of you. Chances are it's going to be something that's already there, not anything you have to make up new from scratch. So that was Frank's lesson on color, um, and I think uh, I think it really took took root. God bless you, everybody. I love you all. Episode eleven: Fear of Color. Take good care. Bye bye.